And welcome back to Bromedy, everybody. Chris is here today with my friend, Toon Shiba. And me and him are going to tackle today another anime review, this time, The Irregular at Magic High School. If you have not heard of it, you're about to hear of it now. It is a, a 2014 anime that was produced by Studio Madhouse. And if you don't know who Studio Madhouse is, you should be shot. They've done uh, a lot of great anime. Uh, recently, uh, No Game No Life is a pretty recent one. Overlord, uh, upcoming One Punch Man. They have. You can literally go look up a giant list in Madhouse, and pretty much whatever they touch, like Death Parade was recently, things they touch usually turn out to be gold. A great animation company. But we're going to go ahead and move into the characters of the show, get things started. Our number one character, Tatsuya Shiba. Tatsuya is a great character. He's a. He's an overpowered character, to be sure, but he's a little irregular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's smart, he's strong, and he's not very good at magic. He he's yeah he's off base to be so genius. He's not uh, good in the classic way that they teach magic, and uh, we'll get to talking about actually how magic works when we get to the story concept of this. But Tatsuya starts off as what you would call a weed. He's not a uh, not not a big time student at the yeah, high school. He, they he's go a to. second class student, so he's on the bottom rung of performance. But as you uh, go through the anime, you find out that Tatsuya Shiba is badass, and for all the right reasons. And because he is kind of a silent character, a silent badass, he can't develop as much as some of the other characters in the show. But he has a very strong presence, regardless. You know what you're getting when Tatsuya's in the room. Yeah. And the other characters in the group help uh, solidify that as the story progresses. But, like I said, silent badass. Probably one of the most OP characters in anime we've ever seen. Oh yeah, he's way up there. Especially as you go through the show. But we'll go ahead and get to the second character, his sister, Miyuki Shiba. Yeah, she is the perfect student. In every way possible. She's smart. She can do literally anything she touches. She comes in at the head of the class, and unlike Tatsuya, she is very good at magic. Yes. Just anything she wants to do is done to perfection. She's considered a gym, and that's one of the high school that they went to really, really wanted her, and she gets involved with like the student council as soon as she gets there. Um, one thing uh, we need to address about Miyuki, she love, loves Tatsuya. Yeah, the uh, siblings, if you know this anime or seen pictures of it, you'll probably recognize the siblings because they have a very unique relationship, almost like lovers. And, and they refer to that several times in the show. Their friends pick at them quite often. But uh, you have to understand that Tatsuya has a love for his sister that is completely protective. He will break the bonds of time to bend over and do anything to protect Miyuki. Now, Miyuki realizes this. Which leads into her love for Tatsuya. Yes. It's uh, it's not a physical love. Uh, what this most resembles is the knights and their princesses, the code of chivalry. And he will do anything for her prin for his princess. So, Precisely. But he's not interested in her physically. But that's the uh, unique thing about Miyuki. Miyuki sees him doing everything and his power for her, and if anybody questions her brother, challenges her brother, she immediately goes to defend him to the point where she does love him. Yes. Right, as the show progresses, you see her physically restraining herself from coming onto him, or even just kissing him like on the forehead. Like, he's napping at one point, and she wants to kiss him on the forehead, she can't bring herself to do it. But when he touches her cheek, she has a happy party in her bedroom. Yes. So it's, a, it's, it's an interesting relationship, to say less, between these two. But Miyuki's also a very standout character in the show. Uh, she has her own special moves that people know her for. Very OP, just like Tatsuya, but probably in a different manner. Now moving on to a third character we're going to get to, uh, Masaki Ichijo, known as the Crimson Prince. Yeah, he's hyped as being uh, Tatsuya's rival, so to speak. Uh, they meet in a... Uh, competition game that are held between the schools and they have to uh, have it out. They are considered two of the great minds of their time yeah. and that there are no uh, compared, uh, it's basically the mind of Tatsuya versus the power of Ichijo which is a typical thing you'd see in other anime 
but how they approach it is really different. It's a, like a respected rivalry, more or less they hate each other. Yeah, it's a, it's a respected rivalry, and uh, say magical power in this show is largely determined by your family, who you were born to, and uh, Masaki is born to one of the most powerful families ever, and so is Tatsuya, but he's that's kept secret for various other reasons. So it's a good head-to-head -head battle. It's something you'd see typical in a high school show, whereas you do, like I said, it's different in the fact that it's it's a magical high school, and like I said, we'll talk about the difference in this compared to other magic shows, but the rivalry, rivalry between these two is just something special. It's something different, and it progresses throughout the show as from a maybe a kind of almost a childish rivalry to a friendship. Yeah, there's there is definitely a level of friendship afterwards. An, an awkward friendship nonetheless. Yeah, an awkward friendship. But they is it's not your typical hate each other until the end of time. Because Masaki is smitten with Miyuki, so that leads to all kind of weird things when someone is crushing on your sister. But anyway, we'll talk about some of the other characters. Um, Erica and Leo yeah. Almost comedy characters, but they do get a lot of fleshed out story too. Yeah, they are, they are uh, Tatsuya's friends in the lower rungs of the school. But you come to find out that even though they're in the lower rungs, they have some unique abilities that are quite useful and can do a lot of damage. And a, a lot of development between them and uh, Tatsuya, because Tatsuya allows them to expand upon what they can do. So it makes for a, a broader horizon for these characters as well. Because uh, Leo and Erica become more involved because of how Tatsuya changes them. And the same can be said for the next two, uh, Yoshida and Mizuki. Yeah. And Yoshida is probably one of the characters that has the greatest amount of development in the show. When he meets uh, Tatsuya, he's unsure of himself, he's unsure of his magic, he's not sure where his life is going to go. And after meeting with him, and fighting together inside the competition on the same team, he gets a hold of his magic and starts to progress forwards. And is actually the only character in the show who moves from the weed class to the first class of students. I actually didn't notice that. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, so he's the only one who really develops greatly. He also has an interesting magic magical power too yeah it's different from everybody else's yeah he he's an ancient spirit uh magic user so he uses spirits and talismans and such and it's for that reason that he's paired with mizuki because she with her great eyesight for magic can see what a lot of other people cannot so she can see the color of the spirits and how they're interacting and it kind of brings their characters yeah. together it allows them to relate to one another and kind of sets them as a relationship, kind of like Eric and Leo, yeah. their uh, comedy style helps them to relate to each other as well, yeah. and between these two relationships there's a lot of <laughs> joking around about them being together. Yes, and it's a completely different relationships too, Eric and Leo is more of a joking, uh, picking at each other, and uh, Mizuki and Yoshida is more of a shy, awkward flirting kind of thing. Uh, other a lot of stuff like I said once again you'll see things in high schools yeah. but like I said it's just a little different because it's a different type kind of high school. Yeah. Now the next character we are going to give a special mention because of my friend Tunshiba here. This is Hanukkah. Yeah. Look at her. Look on the screen. There is going to be a Hanukkah right here. Yeah. Hanukkah is a classmate of uh, this, uh, shit. Miyuki. She's Miyuki's <laughs> classmate. She's in the higher She's in the higher classes, and uh, she's head over heels in love of Tatsuya, and that's why I love her, is because <laughs> she's the only one to admit it and come out and say yeah, it. Yeah, she has the balls. While everybody kind of stands back and admires what he does, Hanukkah's like, look at me, let's go dance. Yeah. She, she's the only one who's ready to fight for her love. Now, there are many other girls who vie for, at times, Tatsuya's. Uh, hand, but none of them come out and say it. And it's uh, there's a lot of teasing there's going a lot of on. Teasing. But Hanukkah is like I actually legitimately love him, which yeah. probably brushes off a little bit of a uh, Miyuki doesn't really care for that too much. Oh no, she doesn't. But she doesn't care for any of the women around Tatsuya. No, 
And there's a lot of good symbolism too behind that, especially when I talk about this scene a lot. There's a dance scene, and you see all these women who have eyes for Tatsuya, and then you see Miyuki who sees every single one of them who have these feels for him. So it's an interesting concept, but that's Hanukkah, and then we're gonna get uh, another one. This is this is my girl of choice, Mayumi. There's a lot of M characters in the show. In there case we there is Seth. quite. So I'm sorry if there is some confusion. Like I said, watch the show; it'll be more clear. Like I, it, you can figure it out as time goes along. But Mayumi is student council president, I think. She's student council president. She is one of she is the daughter of one of the most powerful families in Japan. And her and Tatsuya have a really uh, unique relationship because they're always teasing and poking yeah. at each other. And she sees him differently than most of the other girls. Well, my, my Yumi's also older than the actual uh, main uh, group that you see all the time. Yes. She's, so, a, she's a couple years So uh, she, she has a, a mature approach to things. So it's just it's a little different. But uh, my Yumi, she's very aggressive almost. Like she teases the idea of like Tatsu's already her other half, kind of, and um, even to the point where Tatsu jokes back with her, and yes. it completely throws her off. Probably one of the funniest scenes in the anime. Yeah, they, it's uh, two characters that have great chemistry. Yeah, and they they really play off each other very well. So I I really appreciate that relationship between the two of them. But like I said, being an older character, she has a lot of uh, respect and insight to things that are going on in the anime. And one other character we're gonna address before we move on, Jumanji. Which is another big part of the uh, student council. Yeah. Much older than the rest of the group, but still part of the Magic High School. Yeah, he's the uh, club president, and he's also one of the people from a prestigious magical family. So his influence is very highly seen. And there is a part in the show where he can tell the military what to yeah. do, and they're like, yeah. He, he's cool. also one of the only characters to address the power struggles between families to uh, yes. the Tatsuya and the uh, audience who are watching. So he has a lot of uh, influence throughout the show. Now moving on from the characters, we're going to talk about the animation. Obviously Studio Madhouse and Marcus, who will be uh, hearing this, as well as uh, Tunchi have heard me say, I think Madhouse is the best animation studio out there. And this anime has probably some of the best animation I've ever seen. The uh, use of magic in this show, how they um, animate that is amazing. And I, once again, talking about the dance scene, probably one of the most beautifully animated scenes I have ever seen. I, 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 said, I praise Madhouse a lot, but this show had amazing animation in it. Were any scenes that you would think stand out specifically? Uh, no, just that dance scene. It was, yeah. it was very well done. The, the games were also done really well. There's a game competition between the schools. They really put a lot of focus into those scenes. The action scenes get high animation quality, yes. and they don't just sit back when they're even just standing on talking. It still looks very good. A lot of color usage. Impressive, impressive job by Madhouse. Now we're going to talk about the sound as well, and this is probably one of the down points of a regular Magic High School. Yeah. The sound is good, but it's nothing you're going to remember. The openings and the endings are solid, but it's not going to be on any of your playlist. It's not going to be something that you go look up every day. The uh, soundtracks during the uh, school competition was probably my favorite moment. All the music is appropriate and well done, but it's not it has there. a uh, almost techno kind of feel to like the fight music. Yes, it, it's it a it, it's very different, and I, I can give it points for uh, uh, uniqueness. And it does sound good in the moment, but like I said, it doesn't stand out. It's not one of those songs you're like, oh, I really like to listen to this on my free time. It was unique. It was good, but once again, it does not stand out. Even the openings, who were sung by really good singers. I believe you said Lisa did one of them. Yeah, Lisa, and if not, if not both, I know she did one of them for sure. But they were sung by a really popular. Uh, singers at the time for openings, and they didn't stand out as much as they would for a, perhaps another show. But let's talk about the story overall, and um, it's really good. Yeah, the story is really good. Uh, the anime is based on the uh, light novels, and so the story will follow a light novel uh, build-up arc. It'll start off with the characters, and they'll 
gradually progress through and find out who the bad guy is and have rising action, then you'll have the climax and then it'll drop off and return to normalcy. And that's how the show is broken up into three arts. So you have the enrollment art, getting used to the school. You have this uh, competition art where they're uh, uh, playing against the other schools just to see who's better. And you have the disturbance art. Yes. So Where things get real. Yeah, things get real. And um, a lot of people don't like the slow progression of a show. I believe it makes for a good story. But it also can be knocked off that it's not as fast-paced a show. And doesn't have that hooking first episode like a lot of anime do. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it, it takes some, t- some time to develop. It's a wonderful story, but it's not going to reach out and grab you and reel you in and keep you coming back every week just to see what amazing thing they're going to do. There are plenty of amazing things in it, but they're scattered out and it's not a heavy action packed series yeah, uh, like other magic shows. But as are. we were saying, the story starts off with Miyuki and Tatsuya enrolling in this magic high school and meeting their friends. You're establishing characters and a setting for the show and you're learning what these characters are capable of. And then you get that second arc, which is the the games, yep. and you really see what the characters can do and how they work together. And then you're introduced, of course, with uh, Masaki, the rival, and a potential threat that's upcoming. Yes. And then you get to the third arc when the threat happens, and then you're presented with all the action you could ever want. Yes. And to the point where it's like, I didn't think these things were possible, and they're happening. You immediately believe in what Tatsuya can do come the third arc. It develops from nothing to something genius to something godly powerful. Yeah. And the way the action is set up is not a uh, power creep type deal where the characters are getting stronger as time progresses. It's a the enemies or whatever they're currently uh, going up against are more skilled so you get to see more of the character skill sets. And you get to see their attachments to the military as well as the reigning families and how they handle it. Yes. It brings you in a lot more than what you were set in that little high school setting and leads up for potential for um, a second season but we're going to go ahead and jump into that too because a second season not confirmed and it's hard to say it will be because a lot of Madhouse's stuff only gets one season and Aniplex license the show and if you know anything about Aniplex, uh, they, uh, they have released a DVD set in many different DVD sets and they're all extremely expensive. So if you find yourself able to get your hands on this, get it. If you find it affordable, but from what we tallied up, it's really expensive. So hard to find, pretty expensive, but still worth it in my opinion. Maybe not for that price, but it's yeah. definitely a great anime to watch with a great story. So let's address uh, the sub version of the show. There is no dub currently. I do not know if they're making a dub. I have not heard announcements of it. I actually haven't heard a lot from this show since it ended. Yeah, I haven't heard much either. Uh, the subcast is pretty good. Uh, a lot of good voice actors in there. You've got uh, Kana. Everybody loves Kana. She's in there. Uh, Tatsu is well done. Uh, Miyuki is well done. That's, it's good. It's good. It's a very good caster, so I enjoyed it very much. But with that, let's move on to the ratings for a regular at Magic High School. Alright, what would you give your enjoyment rating for the show? My enjoyment, um, probably I'd give it a 10. Whoa, 10 out of 10. 10. Because it's not like other magic animes. And what I mean is it's not my Lunder, Thunder Dragon Lightning Hammer is bigger than yours. And we're going to run around and beat each other up. The magic is subtle. There's a lot of nuances to it. It's based in science. And it's a different take on a popular genre. And it's just well done. And that along with its story is uh, quite good. I'd give it an 8 out of 10. I watched it on a week-to-week basis as it was being released. Uh, recommended by you, actually. And enjoyed every second of it. I will admit, during the middle, you will get a little tired of the episode-to-episode basis because you're wanting more action. Yes. And they're having to slowly build up. Uh, you can respect the story at the end, 
but it does get a little tiring in the middle. I can say because it is a 25 episode season, you can get a little tired in the middle. But stick it out, watch the show. I give the enjoyment rating a good eight out of ten. Probably want to give it more. But like I said, there was a little bit of lag there for me, so I will knock off just for that. But the overall Bromity score of a regular Magic High School is a perfect 7 out of 10. And as you can see, that's ranked up pretty high on our anime lists. Um, it was a very good anime, and I, I, I loved it dearly. It's a very good anime. It could be higher if the, uh, if the pacing was a bit better. But since they're doing a straight run-up uh, run of the books which is quite nice. I respect that it suffers a little bit, so. But uh, by the way, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this point in there. I forgot to say this. The magic in this show is completely like almost science-based. Oh yeah, the magic, the magic is based in science, so if you want to call down lightning, you need to know the code for calling down lightning. Yeah, you need to know how to manipulate the environment to make lightning. If you want to shoot ice at people, then you would be compressing carbon dioxide into the air into dry ice and accelerating that at people. So it's very science based. It gets it can get a bit complicated, but it's also explained. You know where the magic's coming from, you understand how it's being used, and the more you know, the more you're able to it's, it's all a part of that enrollment it. art. It's yeah. part of the school setting. You learn how things work. And I meant to mention that in the story. I apologize for waiting until the end, but I need to throw that in there. Just so you know that there is a lot of uniqueness to the show and definitely worth the watch. But if you did enjoy this anime review, please let us know in the comments what you think about it. Check out our other anime reviews that we've done, our top 10 lists, as well as Marcus Sensory's Character Study Classroom. And we're going to have some new videos uploaded here in the future. I uh, hope you enjoy them. Like I said, let us know in the comments how you feel, and we will see you next time here at Rome. This is Crucius signing out. Later, guys. See ya. Silent, Silent Badass. 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 Probably, one Probably one of those OP, OP characters OP in anime, anime, anime we've ever seen. Ever seen. <laughs> <laughs>